So Democrat State Senator Nina Turner says while Congress obsesses over Russia, Americans are being, quote, left behind. Take a listen. No one in Ohio is asking about Russia. I mean, we have to deal with this. We definitely have to deal with this. It's on the minds of the American people. But if you want to know what people in Ohio, they want to know about jobs. They want to know about their children. Everyday Americans are being left behind because it's Russia, Russia, Russia. Do we need all 535 members of the Congress to deal with Russia? Can some of them deal with some domestic issues? Let me ask. Mm, well, to our political power panel now, from the Federalists, Bree Payton and Liberal commentator Wendy Osefo. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Bree, let me begin with you. Does the former state senator have a point? I think she's exactly right. You know, as an American, I can tell you what I want my lawmakers uh, to focus on, which is reforming the entitlement programs that suck up 50 cents of every taxpayer dollar that I pay into. And I know that those programs aren't going to be there when I retire. Um, I'm frustrated that lawmakers aren't working with the president to come up with a solution to effectively repeal and replace Obamacare. Uh, and I am frustrated that they're just hyper focusing on Russia, Russia, Russia all the time when there already has been a special prosecutor appointed by the FBI. Uh, and the Department of Justice has already pledged that they're going to handle it and look into it. It's frustrating to listen to senators uh, on the Intelligence Committee repeatedly give interviews and talk about how they're spending all of their time at Langley instead of doing their jobs. So, Wendy, what do you say? It does seem like uh, the Democrats or the Liberals, whoever you wanna, however you want to classify them, have really got their teeth into the bone here. They're not going to let go. Um, is that appropriate? Well, I think I agree in part and I, you know, I dissent in part only mm -hmm. because Russia is an issue. We have seen that there is meddling, but that does not mean that the president cannot work on other issues. Right now, there's children in Flint who still have dirty water, that they're still being poisoned. There's issues going on around our country, but we cannot sit here and say, oh, we're not going to look at Russia because we're dealing with other issues. We can do more than one thing at the same time. And I think that that's what the president and his administration have to do. One thing that stands out in my head is oftentimes during the campaign trail, Trump often talked about the inner cities. He talked about Chicago. As someone who works in Baltimore and mm -hmm. saw the Baltimore uprising firsthand, I was like, okay, this seems like he he's onto something. But right now, it seems like Russia is not only overtaking our media, it's also overtaking his policies. So I would like to see him and his administration straddle two lines. If the media are the bad people, so to speak, let them go ahead and focus on Russia. But you as a president and your administration, you have lots of work to do here. You owe it to the right. American people to and, do that. And you know what, Karl Rove just basically, uh, you kind of referred to that. He was saying, look, let's just press on, let the president actually uh, cite some accomplishments here on the home front. And so, Bree, let me ask you this. Is the way the administration, the Trump administration, handling these questions of Russia, are they doing a good job or do they need to push back more strongly with a more uh, pointed response? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's clear that they've done a terrible job thus far, mm. and I think they've done a terrible job because they talk about it too much. I think it's pretty clear that most Americans um, don't care about the Russia story as much as the media seems to. And traditionally, throughout his candidacy, Donald Trump was really good at being able to talk about things that Americans did really care about mm. and kind of swat away stories that the media was trying to uh, inflate or prop up that weren't really rele relevant to most people's lives. And I think that he needs to tap into that same kind of insight that he exhibited on the campaign trail. And needs to swat away a lot of these Russian accusations. Right. Uh, and I think he needs to hire a more effective, um, you know, speaker at the podium. I think that he needs to get rid of Sean Spicer, uh, who likes to spend a lot of his time defending Donald Trump's tweets uh, and focusing <laughs> and, you know, kind of enabling or indulging reporters uh, fantasies about this Russia story. I think that he needs to have um, someone with a stronger spine. Very quickly, in fairness, 30 seconds to you, Wendy. Uh, other than Russia, what else do the Democrats have? Would you like them to see come forward with more perhaps policy uh, items and things that they can rather than be the party of obstruction actually be the party of uh, creativity. Well, I, I wouldn't say that the Democrats are the party of obstruction. I would rather phrase it as we are the party that holds people accountable. So with that being <laughs> said, um, I think that we should have some level of bipartisanship going into 2017 and working on health care. Obamacare has its issues, but we need to make some pivots, looking at taxes, looking at education. That's another big issue that no one has really talked about. What is the education legislation going forth? Yeah. So there's things that needs to be done here. But I just really wish that Trump and his administration will stop tweeting and start getting the work done. Yeah, stop answering questions about Russia, too. Bree and Wendy, thank you so much both for joining us this afternoon. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh,